Okay, welcome back. It is 1130, and it is again uh, Sunday, February 14th, 2021. If you're watching this Facebook Live, that means you may have been with me now for almost two hours. And again, we were doing these Scripture Memory classes on Sunday nights. I've kind of moved them now to Sunday afternoons. We may move them back to Sunday nights at some point. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do with these. I thought maybe this would be a way to get more people to watch them live. So if so, fine. If not, they may have already spent enough time with me this morning. I understand that. Totally. That's a lot of time to spend straight through. So I do understand that we might move it back. We'll keep you posted on it. Main thing is it's going to be on Facebook. So you can watch it live or you can watch it later if you're so inclined. I hope you are. Hey again, Polly. Um, if, if, if you want to see them on our website, kaumc.church, that's another way to, to do this. And um, the other thing I was going to mention, you know, I spoke to a lot of people the last couple of weeks just in phone conversations. And... Um, there are some people that still seem to have trouble getting on the Facebook. So if you'll just let them know that all of this is going to go on to, um, onto our KAUMC.church website. And um, Tom Lynn, thank you for doing that, for, for posting these. So we'll be able to get these to people, I think, as effectively as we can. We're trying different ways of doing it. But again, just let people know, hey, you can find it either live or you can find it on Facebook later. You can go back and watch these later, or you can see them on uh, on our website. I think there's still some misunderstanding. If you feel if it's Facebook Live, if they don't see it live, they can't see it. Oh no, it's on there. So unless we pull it down, which I don't think we're going to, it's on there. So I'm not going to keep you real long. I think uh, about five or six minutes. We we I'll tell you these are. Phenomenal verses that we're memorizing. Today we're actually on our 11th verse out of 66. So let's see, one, 11 out of 66, that's the one-sixth mark. So we're one-sixth of the way. And like I said, one of these days I'm going to bring either my wife or somebody. I'm going to have them still there, and they're just going to quiz me on these. I'll do it live, and so I may not get them all perfectly, but I'll do the best that I can. But today's version uh, is, is, is one that maybe is not quite as familiar for you in terms of, I'm going to use it. I believe it might be from the New International Version. But it's John 10.10. 10, and it says, The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it to the full. Now, there's another version that says, I believe, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly so that we have the abundant life. So that's a great verse because we know that, that the devil, the, the, the enemy, the, the, the thief... He has nothing good in our uh, path. He, he, he's not trying to help us. It's, it's mind-boggling when we take a step back and we realize how quick we are to go over to the enemy's side. You know, when we, when we disobey God, we, we basically are, are now willfully going over to the enemy's side. It would be like I said uh, one time, uh, if you had the, uh, let's just say the... Uh, the Kansas Jayhawks were playing the Missouri Tigers in basketball. And about halfway through the game, a couple of the KU players went over and played for Missouri. You go, what are they doing? You know, they're playing for the opponent. They're playing for the enemy here. You know, they're playing for the opposition. But, but we do that when we willingly go over and we know, we know that we're disobeying God. So now we're allowing, we're allowing the thief to come in and steal us, you know. So, or, so does the thief really steal us, or do we go willingly with him? This, I think there's a difference there. We talk about that sometime. But in this case today, I'm going to read you the context for this verse real quick. It's in, it's in John 10. So Jesus is saying, I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of the sheepfold, rather than going through the gate, must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant, so he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and find good pasture. 
The thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Now that's from the New Living Translation. So what we have here is this image of Jesus as the shepherd. The sheep know the shepherd's voice. As a matter of fact, at this time in the Middle East, about 2,000 years ago, the sheep were protected. Or the shepherds would put the sheep in a cave, or, or they would maybe build a little wall up and keep them away from thieves and maybe predators like wolves or other animals that would come in and try to kill the sheep. So the shepherd not only protected them in that way, but there were times where if the shepherd was uh, keeping them for the night, he would actually lay in front of the entrance so that there's no way the sheep could go past him without him being woken up. He would he would be protecting him that, that well. You know, you think about Jesus, you think about the Lord, he, that's how he wants to protect us. He's laying there. He's, he's that barrier between ourselves and the enemy. So we're trying to sneak over him if we sin, if we're disobedient. You know, it's mind-boggling. I've, I've literally just come up with that here in the last few minutes. I mean, this image has just really hit me this morning, how we would just almost walk over Jesus to go to be with the devil, to do what he wants us to do, to go sin. It's not what he wants. The other thing is that the shepherds back in those days, they would name their sheep. They would call them by name. Those sheep would actually know their names. You ever had a dog that knew his name? Dogs will know their names. Dogs, dogs are smart. Well, apparently the sheep don't have the image of being real, real smart, apparently. But they were smart enough to know who the shepherd was. You know, we don't have to be a genius. We just need to know who our shepherd is. Jesus. And we follow him. We follow his voice because we know his voice. The Spirit of God in our heart tells us it's Jesus and we can follow him. We don't have to sit there and wonder, is that Jesus or not? We will know. We will know the voice. Maybe you've been with your children somewhere and you've lost sight of them. And you holler out their names and they hear your voice through all the other voices. They hear your voice. They know your voice. They'll follow you. The sheep will then follow the shepherd. That's what it was. So this is a great image for us today as we realize Jesus is our shepherd. He loves us. He'll lay his life down for us. He'll protect us. He knows us by name. He cares for us. Amen. So remember, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said, I came that they may have life and they have it to the full. Jesus came to give us abundant life, not to take our fun away, not to take our joy away, not to take our zest for living away, or certainly not to take our adventure away. If you want to live an adventurous life, go out there and live for Jesus. Go on the front lines for Jesus. It'll be an adventure, and he'll go with you every step of the way. Amen. Thank you all for joining me today. Michelle, I see you here. Thank you as well, and uh, everybody else. God bless you. Stay safe. It looks like it's still kind of snowing out there. Um, obviously, going to be cold for a few days. Take precautions. Be careful. Hope to see you soon. God bless you. Have a great day.